So me and the kids are just hanging out in the garage tonight. I was going through some stuff and uh, we we're just playing and eating walnuts and checking out the Iceman and sitting next to the fire, kicking back, having a nice, calm, cool, relaxing evening. And I was going through some of my primitive supplies and just kind of organizing it and I thought some of you might be interested in seeing some of it. There's a pile of my different fire making, friction fire making stuff I've been fiddling with. Set a bunch of bones and stuff, raw materials. Um, here's some that I have obviously already cut and worked with. And a bunch of fish vertebrae. <laughs> I was thinking about making a necklace with them. Hmm. And we have a bear claw, some beaver teeth, and elk poop, and uh, raccoon teeth, salmon teeth, another vertebrae. I think I found it at the coast. Hollow bone. And I found this in there. This is a arrowhead that I had put on an arrow shaft and shot a bunch until it shattered and then I decided to keep the remnants that I found. I still see the pitch glue on there. It actually held up pretty good until I hit a rock and shattered. These are pieces of it. Elk poo for, for glue and just a bunch of different fibers. Um, got a lot of dog vein fiber, willow bark, um, Cedar, nine bark. There's a sinew string in there. Anyhow, and some couple pieces of jasper that I found. Some of this stuff you'll recognize in videos that I've done before if you've been around a while. Uh, just a little biface and a sharp chunk of green jasper type materials. Okay, here's some of my flint napping stuff. Um, these are my. This is just a pile of little flakes and little spalls that I've collected that I've napped or just sharp pieces. Sometimes I'll use them for scrapers or but sometimes I'll turn them into arrowheads like that to make a really good scraper there. This is some nice agate, some green jasper, some red jasper, um, some unknown material. I have no idea what this is. I found it in a creek. Some really cool slick stuff. Really sharp. I like it. Don't know what it is, but I like it. Or agate. Anyhow, and then a lot of a lot of that type of stuff gets whittled down into a pile of little bifaces of different materials. Some obsidian, some green jasper, some red jasper, some agate. Um, there's some of that other slick stuff I got out of the creek. Um, what else do we got here? Um, Here's a piece of obsidian, rainbow obsidian. That blue color in there. Um, these are a couple of pressure flakers off an antler. I mean, these are a couple of pressure flakers that I use quite a bit, more than anything, more than any other. This is an older one that I've used for quite a while. These are just some abraders that I use in flint napping. This is some finished points that I've got, that I've done. Um, these are drill bits. This is a piece of basalt. This is just, I don't know what that is. Anyhow, there's a obsidian, jasper, green jasper, brown jasper, more green jasper, and a knife I made today just from a flake. And this is that slick green stuff in the creek, I don't know. There's a bunch of sanding stones. Um, just, just pieces of sandstone of different, of, of varying grits. Sometimes I'll shape them to a certain shape if I want to sand a groove in something or a knock in a, or something like that. Some of these are really rough, some of these are less rough or more smooth. These are 
some scrapers I've made. Like I said, some of these you will you'd recognize if you see some of my old videos. Um, this is I've had this a long time. This actually I use like that. This is another one I really like. That one. Use that edge there. That edge. There's a scraper I got at the Mosquito Cave. Off a piece of yellowish, whatever it is, jaspery stuff up there. And this is just a scraper I made from stuff I found in our creek. And here's some hand axes, mainly out of basalts. I found this really cool rock in the creek. It was orange on the outside, but and it was real slick and rounded. But when I busted it, it was really gray inside, and it broke pretty sharp. Here's just a flake. Whoa! Here's just a flake of it. But it is sharp. Man. It's cool stuff. And I found other pieces of this in the creek since then. Um, just a big flat thing that I made a quick chopper with. There's a big chopper. Some of this stuff, like I said, I've used in videos before. Um, like this. There's some pigments, just different colors. Yellows and whites and reds and purples. These are saws, things I use for sawing, or like this I've used to make arrow, cut arrow knocks with. This seems to work really good. It's out of a purplish, I don't know what it is, <laughs> purple rock I find in our creek quite a bit. This is kind of the same type of material that makes a really good saw. And here's some, some basalt saws. This was one of my best saws and I dropped it and it broke in half and I don't know where the other half went. Anyway, these are just different saws that I've made and used over time. And yeah. Then I have some arrow shaft sanding stones that I made totally primitively. These are some hammer stones, some that I've used quite a bit. This has been one of my favorite ones. This is really, this used to be about that much longer and a lot fatter. And over time I've wore this down to a nubbin. I still use it, but it's almost, it's pretty small now. And here's another one I've used quite a bit. You can see how the ends get worn. Kind of you get a angled edge on there. This one I broke yesterday. I was pretty bummed because it was turning out pretty nice. I really liked it. So you can see the you can see the the bevel, the angle it starts getting on the end. I think I hit a piece too hard. I was spalling. I spalled all, was spalling all that stuff there out last night. And I think I just went a little bit too far. Tried to knock off too big of a piece. Anyhow, and some other ones. This is another one I've used quite a bit. Again, you can see the angles on the end that develop. Man. You can, you can see the angles of de that you develop on the ends there. Kind of gives it a little interesting shape. Oh, no, just out. These are ones I haven't used much. What is this, bud? What is it? What's what Sparky? What's he barking at? What's he barking at? A dumb dog. There's a mess of bone tools I've made, different things from um, awls to uh, knife handles to just 
pokey things with another knife handle. It's going to slip a flake in there. Um, two um, wedges. That's a wedge. That's a wedge. Um, knives. Um, pressure. F Ouch! Oh, I just got a piece of obsidian. Um, here's another bone awl. And this was going to be some earrings. Figured I would make them, make it first and then cut them off. Or shape it and put the designs in first and then uh, grind it off to shape. But I never finished it. Yeah, here's some more awls. Ah, blah, 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 blah. This is an arrow shaft size, sizer, size wrench, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. Anyhow, I've used this to peel bark with. This is kind of a little bit. Yeah, this is a this I've used to peel bark with. Use this to a uh, pressure flake. Some pitch sticks, pitch glue. Here's a couple different knives I've put together. This one you've seen from my Creekside Primitive videos. And that too. This is one I made. It's got agate. I really I don't like the shape of this whole knife. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna take it off and redo it. But you know, black butter knife. This is a basket. This is the second basket I've made. And this actually has some cordage and stuff. Oh, watch out, Spark. Spuddy, whatever your name is. This actually has some stuff in it. Um, this is a, a, a sting nettle string, probably about 12 feet. Had it for a couple of years now. This is fireweed fibers. Dog bane fibers, nettle fibers, and what else is in here? Um, more dog bane and nettle. Yeah. Anyhow, there's some more cordage, western red cedar inner bark. Here's a sinew bowstring. Um, just little pieces of dog bane cordage. Red cedar. This, this I was playing around with making uh, the end of a bowstring. Um, I might do a video on it someday. But you can see how it develops into one, one string with a loop on the end. I think I actually made a video, I've just never posted it. There's another one, this one's out of dog bane. See how it's got a loop on the end then it goes to a single thing. And a rawhide string, this is a spare string I got for my um, bow drill bow. This, these are saws. These are for like cattails, tools, toolies. Um, this is made from the, a shoulder blade of a small deer I found that had been killed by a mountain lion. This also. Ah, there's a bug on me. Here's a couple of my pigment paint pot thingies, whatever you want to call them. I use it to crush pigments with. Here's a pump drill. And I might do a video on this someday. But I don't promise anything anymore. I usually do videos on what I enjoy, or what I'm working on at the moment.
<laughs> Anyhow. Um, the other thing is my bow for my friction fire, my bow drill fire, my handheld thing. You guys have seen that before. You're not a true flint knock unless you got blood all over everything. Hmm. Well, that about covers it. Hope I didn't bore you too much. Right. See you next time. What you doing, Spud? Hey there, bud. Okay. Silly boy. What you doing? Um. And uh, you might have already seen this. Um, you might have seen it from my dad's. And uh, uh, so I'm not bone knife. Uh, and sharp. <laughs> Poke yourself with it. See what happens. No. No, could you put this with the little <laughs> Oh, a second. Plus, I wish a little tube.